Yo, what is up you guys and welcome to another video. My name is Benji and this is week number 34 of investing with the Robinhood app. The jobs report came out as of this morning and there's been a huge increase actually, 2.5 million as the economy starts to recover from the coronavirus. Keep in mind this is trailing data so the economy and Wall Street has been going absolutely crazy since the start of the market today uh, and we are seeing some huge gains in the portfolio finally. The portfolio at one point hit over 194,000 and some change, but currently we're at 193,358 and some change. We are up $4,443, up 2.36% as of today. Over the last week, we're up $11,400, up 6.27% over the last week. The last month, we're up $18,000 and some change, up 10.27%. Over the last three months, we we're up $9,000 and some change, up just under 5%. And then over the last year, we started this portfolio just a little bit over 34 weeks ago. We started the portfolio at the top of the market, started investing, and pretty much been investing ever since, all the way through the downturn, all the way back up. And here we are, we're positive now, $4,500, up 2.39%. In today's video, I want to go over all the trades that I did make as of today. I want to show you guys my options trades that are expiring today at the close. I think we'll have a good idea of what's going to be happening with those. Then because the market has shifted into an upward direction and stocks are getting more and more pricey, I want to go over a few companies that might still have some value in them, but also might carry some risk as well. And then at the end, we're going to answer some viewer questions and comments as always. All right, you guys, so even though the market was pretty green today, there are still a number of companies I am down in my portfolio. So I'd still do want a dollar cost average consistently, even when the market is moving into an upward direction. So the stocks that I bought today aren't the giant names that I've been buying pretty much for the most part during this entire downturn. Since the market does seem to be recovering, I want to give some of the other stocks a little bit of love, grab some more shares, and like I said, dollar cost average. So I did grab five more shares of Pembina Pipeline at $27.50 per share. Still just dollar cost averaging. I'm pretty close to all of my um, average prices now as far as where the market price is at. So we are getting there, you guys. Then I grabbed four more shares of Main Street Capital at $35.01 per share. Then I grabbed five more shares of National Retail Properties at $40.15 per share. And then finally, I grabbed 20 more shares of Stake Industrial at $28.37 per share. I grabbed the most of Stake Industrial because this is probably my favorite out of this bunch. And I did have a few more dollars to move as far as dollar cost averaging with Stake Industrial. So I did go ahead and buy a decent amount of shares of Stake Industrial as of today. All right, next, you guys, as far as the options trades that I made as of this week, you guys know that this is probably the most options trades that I've ever made in a single week. Uh, we have some good news and some bad news. As far as all the puts that I sold, I'm pretty sure they're all going to expire worthless because, you know, the entire market has been absolutely ripping towards the upward direction. So selling puts, that's like the perfect scenario in that case, because you're pretty much just gaining free premium and you're not going to have to buy anything um, anyways. On the other hand, this calls that I sold for Pfizer at a $36 strike price, that's definitely going to get assigned. And although I'll still make some profit since my average cost for Pfizer is much lower than $36, it isn't the best case scenario, of course, because there was points um, throughout you know, my holding of Pfizer, theoretically, that I could have sold um, Pfizer for, say, $36.49 and made much more of a profit. So that's just the risk you're taking when you are selling covered calls. Um, but honestly, it's okay. I knew that going into it, and that's kind of just part of the game. The other covered call that I made was with AT&T, of course. With a $32 strike price, this one also will definitely get exercised because AT&T has been well over $32 for pretty much the entire day as well as I think maybe, maybe a little bit of yesterday. So again, not that big of a deal because I, uh, you know, am making some decent profit. I'm making well over $300 um, by selling my three contracts of AT&T at $32 strike price. But at the same time, I could have, you know, of course, theoretically sold AT&T for more profit. So... Again, that's just the downside of uh, selling covered calls, uh, but I knew that going into it, I just really had no clue that the market was going to be doing what it's been doing today. Um, I don't th really know if any of us did. The market has been absolutely going crazy. And the good thing is, I guess, uh, for the most part this week with options trading, I sold more puts than I sold calls, which is exactly what you want to do when the market does just rip to the upward direction. All right, guys, now let's look at some different dividend stocks that might be a little bit more risky, um, but you might still be able to squeeze out some nice yield out of them. Let's look first at Simon Property Group, which honestly, at this point, Simon Property Group is going so crazy that I wouldn't even really consider this one like at a deal anymore. Simon Property Group is paying right around like a 9% dividend yield at this point, I'm pretty sure. Um, so it still is paying a pretty high yield, um, but it is the mall REIT. I don't really know if, you know, it's really smart to stick some money into a mall REIT when there are so many other great REITs out there, but this might be one that you could lock into a pretty serious yield. 
um, if you do believe that time and property will keep going up in the near future. I also just want to note how crazy this is that at one point time and property group was down so, so far. I mean, the 52 week low at $42.25. I mean, as well as pretty much all these other stocks in the market. If you guys have been on this journey for me like every single week, I mean, I've been making videos through this entire downturn. You guys can go back on my channel and look. We've been seeing all these different companies that we've been investing in and we've been really somewhat nervous and somewhat unsure of what's gonna happen in the future. It does feel really good on a day like today, although this could just be a short-term little blip of upward direction. I will say that it does feel really good to see stock prices go back up. Um, and it does give you some hope as an investor, at least it gives me a lot of hope as an investor. And it's really cool to see a lot of our portfolios finally turning green on the year. Another company that is still at a pretty discounted price, you guys, Wells Fargo, it's at 3171. The dividend yield currently is still at like six or seven percent, somewhere around there. And I mean, it's not the highest of quality of banks, but in a market like we're in right now, if you do have some extra money on the sidelines and you have all your main positions locked away with really, really high quality companies, a strategy that I'll probably be implementing here is to start investing in the little bit lower tier, a little bit less high quality companies, um, because I do have such great positions in my overall, I guess you could say staple positions. So, so Wells Fargo could be one to check out too. Another high yielding dividend stock is EPR Properties. EPR Properties is 52 week high. $80.50, the low at $12.56. So if you did get in down there, congrats. That's a great, great buy. But EPR Properties is still somewhere in the middle of the high and low. So this could be one to grab. The dividend yield currently is at like 11%. So it's definitely one of the higher yielding dividend companies that could have some value left in it. So EPR Properties is another one on my radar. So now let's go through a few questions and comments. If you guys ever do have any questions or comments for me, make sure to leave them down below. It could be about investing, business, really anything at all. Just make sure to leave any sort of comments or questions down below. Also, you guys, I will be choosing a few of you over the next few weeks when my Robinhood does run out of the $500 from the free stocks. And I will be picking some of you guys to put your Robinhood referral links in my descriptions. All you have to do to get chosen for that is to make sure that you just like my video, subscribe, and just comment here and there. Remind me that you guys want to be picked in that. And I'll start picking a few of you guys probably in the next week or two. So the first one is from YouTube Fan 2017 That's a lot of money for just four bucks though, just saying. After taxes, even less, right? So what they're referring to is the option trade that I made the other day. Um, I sold a $55 put on Verizon for a $4 premium that expires this week. So I thought this would be interesting to go over because if you look at the screen right here, yes, $4 to tie up $5,500 doesn't seem like a great return on your investment, but it actually is considering we're only tying up this money for literally two days. So really what you have to keep in mind is when it comes to investing, um, especially investing in dividend stocks like I'm doing, it's all about a yield on your money per year. And keep in mind for me specifically, this money was being held in a bank account earning me right around 1% per year, which is pretty much as good as nothing, honestly. So if I can make trades in this portfolio and if I can buy dividend stocks in this portfolio and if I can earn an average yield of say around five to 10% per year on my money, I mean, that's a huge win. And keep in mind, I'm just learning this all still. So if I'm only buying one contract, of a $55 put of Verizon, you know, for a few days and earning only $4. I'm still learning all this. I'm still getting used to everything, keep in mind. So over time, I will be buying, say, 10, 20, 30 contracts um, at a time. So then that $4 turns into all of a sudden, you know, $40 or $80 or $120 every few days. Um, so keep in mind, you can make a lot of money on this. It's all about the return on your investment over the year, over the next five years, over the next decade, of course. And you just have to keep that in mind when you are looking at returning your money. And as far as taxes go, there's lots of things that you can do about taxes. Um, I wouldn't ever use taxes as a excuse to not make investments, to not make yield on your money. If you are getting hit with high taxes, it's for a reason. It means because you're making profits and it sucks, honestly. But, but would you rather be getting hit with high taxes because you're making a lot of profit or would you rather be not making any profit at all? The next one is from Citizen of the Year. Benji, do you enjoy living in an income tax-free state? How much do you think you save just by doing that? So this goes pretty good with the last question. Uh, yes, I do live in an income tax-free state. I live in Florida. I moved here a few years ago because of that reason. I was living in Wisconsin at the time and I was paying, I don't know exactly, I want to say seven, eight, maybe 9% per year of all my profit was going to the state for uh, state income tax. And I did some of the math in my accountant. We went over things and we figured out that, you know, if I moved the company to a state income tax free state like Florida, Texas, there's a bunch of them. You just have to look around. Um, I picked Florida because I liked Florida the best out of the list. After looking into things, I figured out that if I moved the company and myself, of course, to Florida, moved to Miami, 
Um, I'd be saving $50,000 a year um, with the amount of income that I was making at the time, or I don't remember exactly, but I would be saving a lot of money, pretty much all the money that would cover like most of my living expenses. So um, because, you know, the business was doing pretty well and everything. So I figured that out and I moved the company and myself to Miami, Florida. Um, so I'd definitely recommend any of you guys, if you guys own a business or want to start a business, look into that. It might help you guys in the long run and it might save you guys a bunch of money. And the last one today is from Money B. What's stopping you from flipping houses? And did you say vending machines? So yes, I do own a vending machine business, you guys. I do own a vending machine route around Florida. Um, I have gumball machines placed in various businesses. Um, I work with a charity as well, so I give back to the charity a percentage, and then I keep the rest of the money and reinvest in the vending machine company. I've been running vending machine routes on and off since I was a little kid. It was one of my first entrepreneurial experiences. And the thing that's stopping me from flipping houses right now is just the amount of time that I have in my day. I spend a lot of my time on my businesses currently. I spend a lot of time um, trading stocks. I'm really, really enjoying the last year of my life that I really uh, went deep into investing and learning everything I can about this entire world. And I really, really love just documenting it. So I'm spending pretty much all my time on the things that I'm already doing. I really do not have any more time to start walking properties at this moment. Although I wanted to about a year ago, I wanted to start maybe flipping properties or, or owning rental properties. But at this point, to be honest with you guys, I'd much rather just put that money into a company like Realty Income let Realty Income, they're the experts at this, let them do the work for me and pay me my nice monthly dividends. I'm much more motivated to just buy some more shares of Realty Income at this point um, instead of getting into my own, I guess, real estate endeavors. That is going to do it for today's video, you guys. Thank you guys so much as always for stopping by. Make sure to like this video if you guys did like this video. Also leave any comments or questions you guys have down below. I'll answer a few of them in the next video. Also make sure to subscribe, you guys. Monday's video and Monday is going to be very, very interesting because the market has just been absolutely ripping recently. Who really knows what's going to happen next? Are we gonna have a little bit of a pullback and grab some more deals? Or is the market going to just keep going green, green, green? Who really knows at this point? Again, thank you guys so much as always for stopping by and I'll see you in the next video.